This is the orchard next to the house where I live in a small village in the Corbier region of southern France. The orchard holds upwards of 50 fruit trees ranging from peaches to plums and from pomegranates to apricots, as well as mulberries, walnuts and almonds. Most of the trees are from a specialist nursery where fruit tree varieties have been cultivated to be specially adapted to the traditional Mediterranean climate of the Corbière. However, in recent years, anthropogenic climate change has brought prolonged periods of abnormally high temperatures, drought and unpredictable weather patterns, leaving the trees, and indeed most plant life, distressed. These conditions are also affecting non-human animals, who are already changing their habits as a result of increased human activities, such as changing agricultural practices, new house building and increased road traffic. Since the summer of 2021, I have placed trail cameras in the orchard to capture images of visiting non-humans. I knew a wild boar had been visiting, but on the first morning I uploaded the memory cards from the first cameras, I saw a badger and a fox both foraging for the unripe fruit falling from the plum trees. The stems between branch and fruit were not receiving sufficient water, so I could not hold the fruit which then fell to the ground to be eaten by the badger and fox. I did not see the boar in the garden for the first five months, but once they started to visit, they never stopped. Sometimes they came alone, sometimes in pairs, and sometimes in small groups of five or six. And in the early summer of 2023, a mother brought two piglets into the garden on a regular basis. The cameras not only register still and video images, black and white at night, colour in the daytime, they also record sounds. From left to right, the information strip at the bottom of each image gives the position of the moon, the temperature in Celsius and in Fahrenheit, the date and the time. Boars sometimes rub their backs against the trees to which the cameras are attached, or may attempt to lick or even bite the camera. Often, this dislodges the camera or alters some of its settings, as here, where the date has been changed from 7th of January 2024 to 17th of January 2021. In this clip, three boar are foraging together and one can hear the sound of their teeth jumping down on something hard. Before the female boar visited with her piglets, I had always assumed that the orchard would be too near to human habitations for a mother to risk bringing her young with her. However, in December 2022, the village council had passed a decision to switch off all street lamps at 11pm. I surmise that the ensuing darkness gave the mother boar a feeling of security, so it felt safe to her to bring her young, which she did for the rest of the summer and I have a visual record of the development over several months. Over three years, I have amassed a thousand or more clips of non-human animals in the orchard, creating a record of their behaviours during visits to this half hectare of cultivated land, with my house and the village on one side, and river, forest, garrigue and vineyards on the other. In many of these one-minute clips, I have captured fascinating images of non-humans in a range of situations. As you see here, one of the cameras has captured images of a fox working to catch a creature in the earth beneath its feet. While there is a degree of serendipity involved, the capture of useful visual data relies upon judicious placement of cameras and their regular, often daily, maintenance, plus at times some insight into what might attract non-human activity, as here, after some of the grass has been cut, allowing a fox easier access to the earth beneath. Sometimes, the trail cameras capture images of animals that humans see only very rarely. Here, a beech martin. It is only via the post-human photography of the trail cameras that I discovered that a pair of beech martins live in the vicinity of the orchard. The following three clips feature badgers. I have not yet found a way of identifying individuals, so do not know if it is the same badger in each clip or different ones. In clip one, the badger is foraging for worms and insects. You can hear it snuffling, grunting and giving the odd squeak. In the second clip, a badger is doggedly pulling at something in the ground when it is suddenly spooked and runs off. In the third, a frightened badger is running for safety. 
By the way, the lights you can see are the invisible infrared light from the trail cameras. Normally we and the animals cannot see this light, but the cameras pick it up. This final clip is one of my favourites. A large male boar, not content with the bounty of fallen fruit on the ground, is selecting the best plums on my trees and tearing down branches in order to get at them. When boar do this in commercial plantations, vegetable gardens or vineyards, or when they crash into cars or dive into swimming pools, people tend to send for the local hunt as they are the ones charged with eliminating what is so often seen as a nuisance akin to vermin. As I have been making these trail camera images and talking to local people, I have become aware of what seems to be an ongoing war by humans against non-humans. Where it is acceptable to kill or say that one will kill any non-human that dares to come anywhere near one's property. In my research, I plan to investigate the lives of non-humans in the Corbière and study their interactions with humans. By the end, I hope to draw up a plan that may help humans achieve a greater understanding of the lives of their non-human neighbours.